we're going to review the setup for department IDs on a Canon copier. This video will outline the steps for a current generation Gen 3 advanced unit. However, the steps are very similar, if not identical, to previous models. This video will outline everything to set up via RUI. There are a number of things to take note of. You must be connected to the network. You must know the IP address of the copier or MFP. And you must have the admin login if there's one applied on the copier. So let's get started. Please open a web browser. Enter the IP address of the copier in your office. Once you're at this screen, select and enter the default login. This might vary for your office or your location, so please speak with uh, any staff members or IT support if this information is not readily available. Select Administrator Login. From here, select Settings and Registration. Scroll down. On the left, select User Management and then Department ID Management. So as you can see, it's off right now. So if you scroll down, however, you can enter a number of codes. For our lab copier, we have a number of default codes set up. So you can enter all the codes that you'd like, up to 1,000. 1,000 is the maximum amount of codes you can use. These codes do not apply to users, per se. They are not stored in an address book. So a user John Smith would not have a code of 1234. Code 1234 is just code 1234. It does not apply to anyone, per se, on the machine. It's only as good as the person tracking this and the person that has the list with the usernames applied. Again, there can be no usernames applied with ID codes. So here, register new department. We will enter 1234 and we'll give it a pin, 1234. You want to confirm that. And as you can see here in the note, you have one to seven digits max. These are not characters or letters. These are numbers. If you select zero here or leave this as it is, it is good to go. However, if you institute totals and you give them a total of 100 for everything, everything that rolls up into here, then once it equals 100, it'll block that user. So if you just want to track and not limit, what we recommend is zero and unchecked. So no checkboxes there. This user can print, copy, scan, color black and white as much as they'd like. Select OK. Now we want to enter a second user, but we want to restrict that. So register new ID. This user's code will be 4321. And confirm that. Now we want to restrict color. And we want to restrict all color. So as you can see here, checked and zero is off. They can print and they can copy black and white. Select OK. Now if you scroll down, 4321, it's in red because they cannot copy print color or even scan color. That's why it's listed in red. Via the web interface, you can then clear all the counts. However, to print the user totals, you have to do that at the copier itself. That's on the panel. Now, in order to enable this, you select Edit, you select Enable, you want to uncheck these here. This is allowing it with unknown IDs, so they do not have to have an ID listed or it can be an ID not registered with the copier. Those are not good settings that you want. I also uncheck this as the default. Most companies in Canon do not charge for sending or storing only when you print or copy, when you're generating in a file or an image. So select OK. It will log you out. Now if I enter 1, 2, 3, 4, and select Login, there you go. I'm in as user 1, 2, 3, 4, and as you can see, some of my options are missing. This is just a basic user. This is not an admin user. On the panel itself, if you go to the copier, once you select the copy function, it will prompt you for the ID code and you enter it. And then based on your restrictions, you can copy color, copy black and white, you can scan. So really it's, it's all on how you want to set it up. They can have everything or nothing. This concludes our video.